I've mentioned this game a few times in some of my other reviews, so I thought it makes sense to talk about it in its own video. So here's my thoughts on if the... Um... <laughs> uh, into a second son. Now I haven't actually played any of the other infamous games, but I remember seeing one of the trailers for this one a few years back and thinking to myself, that looks awesome! A couple of years later I saw it in the shops after I got a PS4 with only Arkham Knight to my name, so I thought, what the hell, and decided to give it a go, only to discover, I'm not one to reveal my opinions on a game at the start of a review, so let's start with a story. Meet Dalton Rome, member of the Akomish tribe and all-round vandal. On the day that our story begins, a truck carrying people with superpowers known as conduits crashes near him, and while one of the prisoners holds him hostage, Delsin somehow gains his smoke powers, becoming a conduit himself. After a big fight between the two, Hank is recaptured by the leader of the DUP, Brooke Augustine. She begins to suspect Delsin of being a conduit himself, so she begins to stick concrete in the other tribe members. Well, that's not very nice. A week later, Delson discovers that the tribe is dying, so he and his brother Reggie head to Seattle, where the DUP is currently based, to take Augustine's concrete power and remove it from the tribe members to save them. Obviously, the actual process isn't as simple as it may seem. There's a bit more going on than just getting the concrete power, and it all comes together in a story that's, in my opinion, really good. I imagine many people will disagree with me, but I like that it doesn't try to be a big cinematic epic, though it pretends to be, but it does feel like a story that was written to be a video game. What isn't gone from your usual Hollywood-like game is a really interesting cast and superb acting. Gelsin's a bit of a Marmite character. He's the cocky rogue who enjoys his pals and is big-headed about them. If you like that sort of character, you'll enjoy his company, but if you don't, he'll really get on your nerves. It comes down to personal preference, and I think he's great. Troy Baker plays him to perfection, and the banter between him and Reggie is a highlight. Most of the other supporting cast get a little bit of development, but not that much screen time. I have to admit though, they're still memorable. Augustine is an enjoyably evil villain, and the other conduits on the run are interesting as well. But in what way? You see, this game has a morality system that comes into play at several times in the story. We get to choose whether you want to be a good guy or not a good guy. And to be honest, it doesn't really work. Aside from one decision towards the end, it doesn't really make sense in the story that Delson would make any of the evil choices, and you have no real incentive to stray from your chosen path. Heck, they even give you the choice between two missions on some occasions, but the game doesn't allow you to do a certain one if you've been playing good Delson or bad Delson. Why give the player the option then? You can also choose to play more aggressively by actively killing your enemies instead of subduing them, but playing for good karma is honestly the easiest, so unless you want the platinum trophy, there's no real reason to play evil. With that said, does it ruin the story? Of course it doesn't! This is still a very entertaining journey that follows some likeable characters and is overall a good time. Does the gameplay also offer a good time? Your ultimate goal is to take back control of Seattle from the DUP, and it's a very good open world you'll be fighting for. Having never been there myself, I can't tell if it's a faithful recreation of the city, but it makes for a world that has everything I could want from a game of this genre. Variety, tall buildings to scale, and it's big, but not too big. It's not amazingly memorable, but it serves its purpose as a playground for destruction, as well as being very pretty to look at. And incredibly fun to traverse. Simply moving Delson about feels hugely smooth, and thus, satisfying. Whether it be gliding around with smoke, pinging yourself into the air, or... I found traversing through the streets and rooftops of Seattle to be a blast. You won't be able to take down the DUP just by walking around, you'll need to get your hands dirty. The combat can have you fighting many enemies at one time, resulting in many fast-paced, action-packed fights that are a ton of fun. When Delson gets a new power, he starts with very little, but find enough core relays and he's got a variety of moves like melee attacks, ground pounds, insta-takedowns, projectiles to fire, and big explosions at his disposal, and I found myself using all of these in battles. The different powers are pretty similar to one another, but they do feel different to control. 
but what makes the fighting so enjoyable, at least for me, is how frantic it is. I barely stop moving about whilst avoiding enemies, forcing me to use every move in my arsenal, particularly as the game gets harder, but not frustratingly so. And seeing as moving around is so enjoyable, fights are a ton of fun. The campaign isn't massively varied, save for a couple of short segments that somewhat spice things up, but for whatever reason, the game never became too repetitive. At times, yes, but rarely. So controlling Delson throughout the story is hugely enjoyable. What about simply roaming the city? What is there for you to do? Admittedly, not a lot. Aside from a side mission that requires you to sign up online, everything revolves around taking over each district of the city. To do this, you must first destroy the DUP's mobile command center in the air- <laughs> Then you have mini objectives to do that lowers DUP control in that district. Some are just simple destroy this object, while some are a bit more interesting, like painting graffiti over town, finding a secret agent in a crowd, among others. They're simple, but somewhat enjoyable. Once there's only 30% control left, you can graffiti over a billboard to set off a district showdown, this big, epic battle between you and the DUP forces. Once you defeat all of them, the billboard becomes a fast travel point, and if you're a completionist, you can finish off the side missions should you wish. This might all sound standard, and it is, but I'd be lying if I said I haven't killed some time doing them in the past, and some are actually quite fun. And considering some are very easy and quick to do, I'll sometimes free some conduit suspects and destroy a camera or two on the way to a story mission. And that's all this game has to offer. So my final conclusion, it's... Great. Is it perfect? Nope. Can it get a bit samey? Yes. Does that matter too much? No. My best analogy to describe Second Son is that it's the video game equivalent of Field of Dreams. It's by no means a masterpiece, but it does what any form of entertainment should do, and it entertains. I play through this game three times now, and have enjoyed doing so every time. If you have a PS4, this is really worth checking out for a great story, hugely fun gameplay, and for just being a great time waster, but I'll score 89%. It's not the greatest game of all time, but to be perfectly honest, I wouldn't want it any other way. Power core, it should be on top. I don't want to be infamous, I want to be... famous.